This is Zuma Rock, the second largest natural monolith rock in the world. There's a lot of myths around the rock. They say people are trapped in there, but the most obvious is the presence of a human face on the body of the rock. But just beside it lies a lush green resort and training institute that was inspired by the rock. What he was envisioning was to have a Camp David in Africa. So he wanted this also to be a village where an, an education village or education city. And uh, it's meant to actually end up with having a research institute and a university. In today's episode, we'll be visiting and touring Zuma Rock Resort and Royal Institute here in Nigeria. We all came here first. It was just like a bush. Bush, nothing. Bush, bush, nothing. So people were actually using it for yam and cassava. But other than that, it was just mud, swampy, No, you know, you can't walk around. I'll meet up with the founders to learn more about this travel destination a lot of Nigerians and travelers love to visit. We are Nigerians. We have a gem, like a diamond. Yeah. And what you need to do is you need to polish it. And once it's polished really well, you can actually be proud of it, take it and show it to the world, mm. right? You need to tell the story of this place, of this nation, to you know, to the world. To the world. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and please like this video so more people can see it too. So how did you find out about Zumara Resort? I mean, I make, uh, I make a lot of uh, travel videos, as people know, on my channel. So whenever I, because I travel quite frequently, I like to see organizations and companies that are putting in effort to promote tourism. So it's good people see places like this. So when they decide to come to Nigeria, <laughs> they can come check this Especially place Especially the out. people that they like green. Yeah, Anything green Anything they can see, they can only see green here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> This is breathtaking and it seems like I, I got closer to the rock. And I love, I saw impalas as well. Uh, I love that you guys are also incorporating wildlife, which is very interesting. Thank you, Steve. Um, I mean, it's really nice to have you. You're welcome, finally. Uh, we've been waiting for you so eagerly to come. Thank you so much for gracing us. So my dad actually is the visionary for, for this project. And what he was envisioning was to have a Camp David in Africa. So a place where um, that top level things could happen in Africa, right? Opening up after COVID was in stages. Mm -hmm. Though the place was here for like 15 to 17 years before, but it has not So the been... land was already acquired. Exactly. 17, like exactly, 17 years. Exactly, exactly. And the golf course was here. But the rooms, the hotel, the current structure, we had the structures, but it wasn't packaged in this manner. All right. And then the resource started running immediately when the COVID started opening. We were, we, people can travel locally, but not internationally. And then this place was a safe haven for everybody to come mm. in. Right, right. Because it's not like your social distancing here. Like, you know, it's so big. How many hectares is it? It's, it's uh, uh, close to, yeah, close to 60, 57 60, hectares. 60 hectares. So mm -hmm. you can commonly have over a thousand people here. And it's not even going to seem like you guys are close to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a work in progress. Uh, it's phases. The current phase now is the, the golf resort with the hotel rooms, you know, the rooms and the, the nature, all of this, and then the educational facility as well, which you will, uh, you, will, you will come to see. What are the kind of people come here and really what do they seek for when they come to Zuma Rock Resort? NGOs, companies, all United right. Nations, okay. CBN, uh, and, uh, NNPC, all of these Government, Government, yes. Companies that are looking to do work retreats and then they want to mix fun in between. It's true. Can come here, they so. will take accommodation plus they will do the training. It means if you are coming to the resort, you will sleep in the resort and then you at the same time you're doing the training. We are 120 rooms. Uh, 120 rooms? Yes. Okay. And we are extending. Expanding. Yes, we are expanding. Most of our work right now is on training. Of course, on the weekend, you will be having individual people coming to enjoy their stay. Families. Families. But most of the work is training. It's training institute. Uh, we have like 10 halls right now. They are effective. We are working. It's working right now. Mm -hmm. We have six blocks. Each block has uh, six categories of rooms. Start from the standard room to the classic room to the deluxe with view, that has a view. Mm -hmm. Penthouse, two bedroom, penthouse, three bedroom. My chairman right now is thinking about building a 150 room. Oh wow. Plus the 120 that we have. Oh wow. We have that project working on right now. We are still still on the, on the project. But uh, I think between now and a month time, we're going to start. This is our training institute. 
Okay. Wow, it looks, it looks like a five-star hotel. Mm, no, it's a training institute <laughs> <laughs> where we can hold trainings. Oh, wow. This looks like where the House of Senate will mm -hmm. have their meetings <laughs> with the Nigerian, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we so... We can start from up if you yeah, want. Yeah, let's, let's go down. This... Oh, wow. ...is a boardroom that can take around like 20 people. Wow. Fully equipped. Smart screen projectors. Sound system. So this is the smallest This spaceship. is uh, the smallest boardroom. We'll have, all, of course, other categories I will show you right, right now. Let's go. This is a syndicate hall. Oh, okay. For all 24 person, 20 person maximum also. As you can see, there it's a boardroom. Mm. You cannot move tables. Yeah. Here you have shapes. This is a U shape. This is one of the syndicate halls. That Slightly bigger than the other one. Yeah. This yeah. is a meeting boardroom. Yeah. For 40 percent. So I mean, the only the difference is the size. Yes, yes. The size. It depends on the size and the, of course the colors of the of the halls and uh, the shapes because you only have two boardrooms, two syndicate rooms, and two halls, big halls. One for 60 percent and one for 100. Oh, yeah. We're going to see it right now. Right here is a small executive office. If some companies want to rent uh, an office, mm. you know, sometimes they come, they want a separate office where they can meet, so they don't have to go all the way up and come down here. So we the rent office. them this office as, as an executive office. <laughs> and as you can see, each yeah. hall has different color different, from the other one. Yeah, different. And yeah. This. Yeah. Oh, wow. So this is like a company is already occupying. Yes, there's a company, there's an NGO doing a training uh, from tomorrow, but uh, they started to set up today. This can take this 100. This can take 100 person. Uh, I mean, when I was researching, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think I saw I saw this part of the research. I just no. thought it was just the other we, side. I'll tell you why. Because when you research, you research for Zumarok Resort. Ah. This is the Royal Institute. Oh, right. We also have a website called Because Royal at the gate, there's a Royal Institute yes. right there. So I was asking, like, why is there a Royal? I'm supposed to be saying Zumarok Resort. Because what I know, sorry, sorry, you can <laughs> speak. What I know from the beginning that my chairman wanted to do a, an institute. Not a hotel, for schools or something mm -hmm. like that. People can come and sleep, dorms, yeah. uh, and then they can, uh, it's an institute for teaching them. Oh, now so I get it. Now, and then, uh, so the hotel uh, is changed, an after, yeah. aftermath, yeah. Yeah, it changed the idea. It's a, close to a 6,000 square meters building. Yeah, it's we massive. have more than 10, <laughs> 10 halls in different yeah. sizes, more halls, I mean, under construction halls with bigger spaces. I'd like to tell you that the um, PIB bills, which is the Petroleum Industry Bill, happened here in this, in this, uh, in the, in the Royal Institute. Wow. Both chambers, the upper chamber and the lower chamber, for example, the Senate, the Reps House, all came here uh, in these halls, and all the deliberations, all the back and forth happened right, here exactly on this property. It does make sense, and mm -hmm. it's great you guys are also incorporating the the hotel part of it. So mm -hmm. of, co of course, people can come here for a weekend retreat, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, yeah, so you're constantly expanding. You have more halls coming, and then you also have more hotel rooms, rooms coming. Exactly as coming. Well. Okay, so what do people need to know about the Zumaro? From my own research, it's probably the first or the second largest rock in the world. So this type of rock, it, it, it's 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 very you know it's very unique. It's close to 600 meters, if I'm not mistaken. It was only climbed once by a Latvian group in 2008. How are you going to climb this? So it's mount like, climbers, exactly. Like so my, mount climbers came and then they put, you know, they came with their drills oh, and okay, hooks. Yeah, yeah. So they were experts, exactly. Yeah. And it took them three days to do that. Three days? Three days, exactly, to reach the top. Culturally, there's a lot of myths around the rock that it is you know, uh, haunted and there's, you know, uh, cre has, supernatural yeah, power. It has a human face on it. Exactly. There's also a saying, you know, when it rains, people say that fire, you know, it gets like fire is lit on top of the rock and all of this. <laughs> Some people see, I have not seen that to be honest, but, but locally they say somebody comes like somebody, yeah. you know, a spiritual power, they come and then they use a bucket and put fire inside and, you know. So many so, exactly. spiritual explanations. <laughs> yeah. So what are the what are the activities that people can do when they come here? Oh, now what you have as activities you can ride a bike, okay. bicycle. There, we're actually riding a bicycle. Okay. Well, I was like, yo, let's just uh, have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Horse riding, uh, swimming pool, uh, table tennis, golf, and then we also opened the gym now. The second uh, phase of the activities now we're going to build a tennis court, okay, basketball court, and uh, badminton. Okay. One of the activities that people enjoy here is hiking. Mm. So there's a river, several rivers that go around, you would go to see. You could just come and then walk or have like hiking across uh, the, wow. the, the, the river the riverside, yeah. which is quite also very uh, interesting as well. What can you say about like 
tourism in Nigeria? Now it's starting to pick up. Now it's starting to be good, especially like me mm. as a resort manager on Booking.com. I've yeah. been receiving a lot. Oh, okay. A lot, especially from overseas. Yeah. It looks like like people now are starting to get interesting to come to visit Nigeria. Like I said, most of the people are coming from overseas, from UK from South Africa, mm. I've received people from USA. Oh, okay. So it's not it's not bad, it's starting to pick up. So on a on a very busy weekend, like how many people would you expect here at the resort? It's a weekend I will I will be getting individually, I will be getting between uh, 50 to 60 person around us mm. in the hotel. Well I know you guys are always booked most of the well, time. We are because of like I said training. The trainings, course, right. Yeah. People have seen this, uh, it's very beautiful, the resort, massive hectares. But really, what was, what was it like building a resort like this? What was the challenges? What were the setbacks? It wasn't uh, rosy all, now it is. Yeah. But it hasn't been that rosy, of course. It had its own challenges. Mm -hmm. As kids, we remember when my dad, you know, started this project yeah. and how challenging it was for him, you know, financially even. A point, you know, whatever he got, he was investing in this place. Any money he gets, exactly, he, put he in gets, there. it was invested here. And this was a priority. He, it was probably his um, one of his children too. The project was one of his children. You know, he had to at a point sell even properties he had just to fund and continue wow. this place and you know to see the vision come true. So he literally walked the talk. We <laughs> saw him how dedicated he was. We learned this from him. Yeah. You know? uh, and then he decided to even abandon everything he had uh, in town in Abuja city and come here and stay. So he actually we live here. Oh wow! How exactly. long? Did, how we long? Live here now. How long did it take for this whole project from start to finish? Well, the it construction. Took, the construction took probably close to six years, also, and okay. it wasn't an easy. Like there would be years whereby the he he will have to stop, you know, because it was all he was all dependent on w what he got. Oh, right. No government intervention, you know, loans or anything. But he, he got it from what he was earning what he was you know getting uh, from other his other businesses and then so all exactly that, all, put that, all that exactly exactly wow. so it wasn't an, an easy you know and for for more than 15 years or 16 years this place didn't give him back any penny but he still decided to continue and until recently you know uh, now that we are where we are quite established and all of this you know the place has its clientele base and mm -hmm. all of this it's quite um, convenient yeah and now he is actually you know ripping some of the fruits. i mean if you want to count the top three places people really visit in abuja this is going to be like number one or number two i don't even know where mm -hmm. number one <laughs> right I agree. but it's just interesting to hear that yo there's the, the struggle and uh you guys are not you're not nigerian first so your second nigeria is like your second citizenship yes, so yes, yes. um it's really beautiful we meet we need more people actually to come into this so. country and uh build this for better because i'm very passionate about tourism and just the hospitality in general I agree. so this is just a testimony and then you know a lot of people come here for trainings and seeing the resort and uh yo you guys should come check this list out <laughs> if you haven't already thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next episode